Yo, welcome back to The Breakfast on Plots TV Africa. It's now time for Off the Press and we're being joined by the Chief Lecturer of the Nigerian Institute of Journalism, Mr. Julia Johnson. Good morning, Mr. Johnson. Good morning, Anita. Good morning to our viewers all over the world. Fantastic. We're beginning this morning with the Daily Independent newspaper. The headline reads, Orosanye reports on civil service reform outdated, and that's according to the HCSF. And it says, even the agencies and parastatals that were meant to be rationalized had been increased with, the create, with more created after the report. Also, 21-year-old Unilag female student says, how I killed Super TV CEO. Again, Buhari travels to London today for medical follow-up. World Health Organization raises the alarm over rising COVID-19 cases in Africa. FCTA records seven deaths in 91 cholera cases. Sirica says federal government to finalize airport concessions by August. Dangote receives highest civilian honor in Cameroon, pledge, pledges expansion in investment. Lawan rejects INEC's request to involve lawmakers in constituency delineation. Also says the National Assembly will pass Electoral Act Amendment Bill in PIB soon. Northern Coalition drags National Assembly to court over constitution review. Federal government pays 24 billion naira to 413,630 public works scheme beneficiaries. On the Daily Sun newspaper, Alleged soldiers' collision with bandits. Defense Chief Irabo attacks Sheikh Gumi. Says anyone accusing military of conniving with bandits is hallucinating. Islamic clerics should be arrested. IPOB. FG Wu's retired military officers. Anambra Guba. Soludo's runner-up rejects Abga primary results. Buhari goes to London for medical follow-up. INEC admits security threats as registration at registration areas to deploy machines and 5,346 staff to 2,673 centers. Federal government states owing 33.11 trillion naira. That's according to the National Bureau of Statistics. Senate president justifies borrowing. ONU to submit revised 25-year roadmap on national space policy to Federal Executive Council. Onion producers hail Uzodima for brokering peace with South. Tension as gunmen storm Abuja Hotel. Kidnap six guests, owner. Five bandits killed, two arrested in Niger. Zamfara Governor Metawale may join APC next Tuesday. Moving on now to uh, the Nigerian Tribune. Uh, the story about the murder of the Super TV CEO is also here. The headline reads... Uh, infrastructure, Nigeria is poor. Only option is to borrow, Senate President. Federal government states owe 33.11 trillion naira external domestic debts. Also caught slate July 21st to hear suit seeking Buhari's sack from office. Buhari returns to London from medical checkup. Ban government officials who violate press freedom. Electoral reform stakeholders charge US, UK, Canada. Rep Stoman A. Amechi NPA over 166 billion naira unremitted revenue. Alleged rape. Court grants Babai Jasha 2 million naira bail. IPOP tells Gumi, we're not after northerners but terrorists. Kogi governor moves to stop grants to former governor Idris. Others. Ondo robbery suspect says, I wanted to be more popular than Oyenusi Anini Rambo. 13.5 million children can't access quality education in Nigeria. Um, uh, we'll also take a look at the Punch newspaper. Uh, the headline talks about the, the president uh, leaving for the UK for a checkup. Um, it also has a story about the Super TV CEO's murder. Other headline reads, Emirates makes a U-turn except Nigeria, South Africa, Indian passengers. Amocheku consults residents as robbers' rights or Shun community demand 20 million naira. And we see a picture here of a school with school kids and uh, the soldiers 
um, with the children. And it reads, NYSC Director General Brigadier General Ibrahim in Udege community of Nasarawa State during the Health Initiative for Rural Dwellers campaign of the scheme on Thursday. Also, food vehicle bullion van crash in Ogun Ondo. Four women, two men killed. Caught here suit challenging Atiku's citizenship September 27th. Kara Bilonier's 28-year-old grandson dies. Residents suspect suicide. Also, NPC, NBC amendment bills against constitution attempts to criminalize freedom of expression. That's according to Falano. The federal government says we're investing $1 billion in Lagos about an expressway to others. AFDB unveils 10,000 megawatts of solar power plant for 250 million Nigerians. Um, let's take a look lastly on the nation newspaper. Um, I, will be, I will okay restructuring bill if passed, says Buhari. Senate to begin final push for PIB passage next week. Bandits kidnap 33 in Kaduna, threatens Oshun community. Babai Jesha gets bail. Twitter suspension, a hard decision to take. Uh, minister, 476 online platforms working against government. 8.1 kilometer Ife North connecting road inaugurated by Oyitola. And lastly, Tunubu hails Bajabi Amila Sonwolu on his birthday. Good morning and thanks for joining us once again, Mr. Jide Johnson. It's a pleasure to be, it's a pleasure to be with you. <coughs> Uh, there, are, there are many big stories on the punch news on, on the newspapers this morning. There's about restructuring Nigeria's debt profile, um, the president leaving to the UK. There's a story about the super TV CEO and the murder. Where would you like to start? I'll, I would like to start with, with the president saying I will sign the bill, the structuring bill if passed by the Senate. And I think that um, the APC is just playing deep service to to restructure it because it was the party that ran on restructuring. If you check the manifesto, the agenda, the campaign stump speeches of APC as an opposition party, um, their party that, that promises change, change in the structure of governance, change in the attitude of governance. So the president is saying that you pass the bill then why, why does he not raise the bill as the president as an executive bill? Because the party that controls the executive and the legislature presently at the national level is the APC. The, the president, on his own, in trying to restructure the system, made an executive order that gave, that tried to give autonomy to the legislature at the state level and the state House of assembly as well as give financial autonomy to the local government. So the president on his own has agreed that there is a need for restructuring of the legislature at, 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 at the state level, the judiciary at the state level, and then the local government, which 1999 Constitution has amended, it not even make provisions for, which is the third tier of government. So just looking at that, he himself has identified three areas that needed to be restructured. So when he's saying he passed the bill, I think he's paying lip service to it. All he needs to do is just to call for, for the meeting of his party members or, the, for the, or to instruct the acting national chairman to, to call for a national caucus meeting that will involve himself, other party leaders, the, the speaker, the Senate president, the majority leader in both houses, and then they sit together, they fashion out the bill, and they pass the bill in no time if they want you don't want to achieve that rather than going through an executive order, which in more or less is like a decree. So, so, so what's the likelihood of, of the National Assembly uh, passing that? The National Assembly, when I'll link that to another story, a major function of the, of the, of the, of the legislature is to, is, to, is to pass law. Now, INEC wanted to involve the National Assembly in the delineation of constituents because the constitution needs to be delineated. The population of Nigeria in 1999 is not the population of Nigeria in 2021. So you have to really delineate the constituents. What did the Senate president say? The Senate president jettisoned, shied away from his own responsibility, said the National Assembly will not join INEC in the nation of the, of the constituency. So what do you expect from the National Assembly? Will you ask, will you require a body to make laws that will render them inactive in something that they are part and parcel of 
a beneficiary of a particular a particular system. Mm. And co even coming to that, the electoral act that was passed in in prior to 2019 election, the president did not assent to it. The National Assembly went ahead to pass that electoral act. The president did not assent to it. People are saying that there was no time. Now, since 2019 to date, another we are having an election in 2023. Nothing has been done with respect to electoral act that will, that will guide 2023 elections. Even another related story, the INEC registration is about to, continuous voters registration is about to start nationwide. The INEC as chairman said that they are, the registration process is being threatened because of security challenges. So you could see, if we begin to link this story together, you could see how agencies of government, institutions of government, and those who have elected into offices, how they have failed in their in their responsibility of making sure that things work out smoothly in, in the nation. So as okay. far as I'm concerned, I will sign the bill. All the president needs to do is to ask his liaison officer or people working in the presidency for them to fashion out a bill and they present it before the National Assembly as an executive bill. Prior to presenting it before the National Assembly, they do it at the party level, at the national at the national caucus level, they look at the bill and the presidency and the party that run on progressive agenda, that run on the agenda of change, will present it. But well, what do you expect from a party that cannot hold its own national convention? What do you expect from a party that is being run by a caretaker committee? What do you expect from such party? Mm. What do you expect? If a party cannot put its own house in order, cannot abide by its own constitution, you now expect that party to put Nigeria in order, to put the constitution of Nigeria in order. Except you are, you can't give what you don't have. It's, it's a basic principle. You can't give what you don't have. It's, it's an aberration. Now, uh, there's a story in which is also related to that. The runner-up of Abga in Anambra State said they will reject, is rejecting the result of that election. Yesterday, I next said they are not going to accept the candidature of Abga because Abga did not notify them yes. concerning that election. I've not seen INEC writing APC, telling APC that um, having a caretaker committee managing your party at the national level to the state level to the local government level is an aberration and antithetical to democratic spirit. INEC has not written APC because concerning, concerning that. So um, God will not help Nigeria. Nigerians will help themselves. Okay. But you can't flout principle and expect to get results. You can't want to build a house without having a foundation. That's a building waiting to collapse. It's just a matter of time. The building, the building will collapse. Even if you are laying the foundation, if you don't put rod, you only use cement and, and, and sand to build the foundation. It's, it's just a building waiting to collapse. You, no matter amount of prayer you pray, you can't hold the building, you can't sustain the building if you don't do the right thing. So doing right. the right thing is critical so, concerning having, okay. having a nation. So, Mr. Judah Johnson, I don't know how you can tie um, some other national stories together. Um, the Senate president has said Nigeria is poor. The only option is to borrow. The MBS has talked about how federal governments and states owe over 33 trillion naira in external and domestic debts. And the president's uh, medical tourism uh, jetting off to the UK today. Oh, look, um, the Senate president Nigeria is... We are led this leader to think. Just imagine if it's a private company, a, pop, a, part, a private company. You, you, these elected leaders are like you are hiring someone to help you manage, to manage your company, to manage your resources. Just imagine that if the crop of people that we have in leadership, if it's a private company and we go up a public um, liability company, and we go for the shareholders meeting. What do you think we'll do in the shareholders meeting? We'll vote them out as board of directors. We'll take them out. What would you expect from a Senate president that has been that, that, that has been in the National Assembly since 1993? What do you expect from them? They don't do anything. All they do is to sit and have meeting, and then they say they do oversight function. They don't think outside of the box. Must we borrow to solve problems? And then how have we justified the money we have borrowed? How would the Senate president be making justification for borrowing? It shouldn't even come from him. That's the responsibility of the executive. Let the executive present before the National Assembly that we want to borrow. And then the National Assembly will look at it, whether they can borrow or not borrow. And what do they want to use the resource? But when the, when the gatekeeper, that should gatekeep whether they borrow or they don't borrow, on how that has the power over the post, becomes the spokesperson for borrowing, then you know where we are 
as an as 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 a nation. And the NCF said the the states are owing the federal government is owing. Everybody is indebted, and we can't see we can't see any meaningful impact of the money government has borrowed in the lives. The effect of it in the lives and property of of, of is it security. We understand nation, nations borrow money. Yesterday, the United States of America, the president made a press conference where he said he had a joint um, a, a bipartisan infrastructure bill to build infrastructure. Nations borrow money to build infrastructure. Infrastructure lasts for a longer period of time. And everybody, yet children yet on board will come to enjoy it. But they will also pay for it. Not the kind of borrowing we have in Nigeria. If we borrow money to build what class of speech, the president would have to travel to London. If you have to count the number of times the president has traveled to London, who is paying for his medical trip abroad? Who is paying for that? If we have the resources in Nigeria, if he had borrowed to build that hospital in Nigeria, why well, would be giving, will be, will be, will be, will not be contributing money to United Kingdom economy because everything will be done in pound sterling. We will take. He would, the president will go, he will go with the security aids, he will go with the firefighter of office. It might be at a reduce, at a reduce, but we are contributing more to the economy of Britain. But imagine if we have an hospital and the doctor that is consultant are Nigerians, the money will be retained in Nigeria and it will contribute to the growth of, 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 of Nigeria. But here we are, the president keeps going to America, uh, keeps going to London. What of Nigerians that cannot afford to go to London? What of Nigerians that can ever? Why, have you ever seen the president, the prime minister of Britain, coming for treatment in Nigeria? Have you ever seen the prime minister of, of, of India going for treatment elsewhere? Have you ever seen? I've never seen. It's an aberration. It's an insult. In fact, it's the, our leaders should be ashamed of themselves. I don't know whether they have any, 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 any sense of shame for them to be traveling abroad to seek medical, medical facilities. So Nigerians that can't travel abroad to seek how would they get uh, medical... All right, Mr. Johnson. Uh, Mr. Gina yeah, Johnson. We need that to the security issue. We need that to the security issue. The chief of armies, the chief of defense staff said, Sheikh Gumi explained to the gallery by accusing the military. Can you say that statement? Can anybody say that statement or walk freely the way Sheikh Gumi has been talking with respect to security challenges in the country and then accusing the army? Is that not tracing and felony? Can I or you and I just wake up and then go on the air and say, you know what, the army is conniving with the bandits. That's why we are having banditry and the rest of it. Only for the chief of defense staff to come. To come. I think you should be invited by security. If you remember, you some, other, some other people have been arrested for making similar claims. You know, but uh, yeah. Sheikh... It's, yes, go it's, ahead. It's, 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 it seems to be un, 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 untouchable. It seems to be untouchable. At least, we are not saying it should be debriefed. It should be invited. Not even arrested in this first. Invite him, debrief him, gather intelligence from him. That's what it should be done. That's what is done in normal crime. And then if whatever you gather from him shows him being being culpable in 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 in, in the in the in the security issue that he's talking about, then you prosecute him. But if he's not culpable, you use him as as a viable intelligence gathering resource. That's how it's done. Not for the chief of defense staff to be replying and responding to him on the pages of newspaper. I don't understand mm. the way we operate the security apparatus of this country. Also, the federal government here say they're trying to woo retired military officers to get back into action. Um, we've heard many talks like that. Uh, you know, so many stake stakeholders saying the federal government can get back retired military officers. Uh, but the concern really have been these people, you know, are, are being poorly treated. And uh, how really can they come back? The patriotism, uh, is it still there? Are their welfare being taken care of as, you know, retired officers? So um, what are your perspectives on this story of the federal government trying to woo retired military officers to join the anti-insurgency operations? Well, um, this modern warfare, is modern warfare. Those retired military officers, can they fight in this modern warfare? Are they equipped, are they trained to fight this modern warfare? Or what should we do? Should we recruit new soldiers and have reserve and have them as reserve? The reserve you have in the military. 
you train them, you keep them to deal with the challenges of, of this particular um, modern warfare that, that's guerrilla, guerrilla warfare. Well, in any case, whatever government feel is appropriate, if it's bringing the third Niger, but there's a key element that we need, we must talk about, which is the motivation and the welfare package of those fighting insurgents. If you don't motivate your troops, if you don't encourage them, if you don't build their confidence, there's no way you can win you can win any war. So government needs to do a lot with respect to the welfare and motivation that is given to um, these um, security agencies fighting the war on, on, on the war front in the northeast and fighting banditry in the, north, in, the, in the northwest. I think if government has the plan, and but they must put in place to encourage those that have retired to come back to, 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 to fight the war. And for those that are also presently fighting the war, are we saying that they can't fight the war? What is really wrong? Are we short on personnel when it comes to personally fighting the war? The, the totality of the insurgents, their number in strength, the resources they have, the, the, their resources can match that of Nigeria. And I think that we should, we should be up and doing fighting this particular war. That's, that's just my opinion with respect to this. All right. Uh, do you have any thoughts on this particular story? It's, it's trending nationwide about the, the death of the Super TV boss. Well, um, um, the, the story is, is an unfortunate story. Um, but from my own understanding, I'm sure that I, I, I think, uh, which is my opinion now, it's, it's not fact that um, drug is involved in, in this particular, that's, that's my that's Yeah, my she, she, she did that. mention that they, they took some of those, yes. And those substances, because um, for someone to, to, you must have had a relationship prior to that. And um, for someone to kill, to stab another person severally, someone in his right senses, should not should not be able to do to, to do to do to do that particular particular um, issue. Um, it's a case that the police are looking into that presently under investigation. I think that we should wait for the investigation um, to be true before we come to judgment. But it's unfortunate. It's, it's rather rather unfortunate that a young girl that has a bright future ahead of her ah, um, will, will be caught up in this particular mess, and it should be a lesson for all the girls out there, and as well as for all the men out there with respect to who you ever want to have a relationship. In relationship with, you must have a background, you must have a background, a background, a background check of, um, of whoever you want to have a relationship with, and whoever you want to bring into, into your house concerning your private matter. Now, this is a private matter. If the security, if the um, complications of murder is not, in, homicide is not involved in it, we won't know about this, about this particular, about this particular, particular incident. And then how did it happen? How was the girl able to overpower the man to stab him to death? Did he stab him to death in his sleep? All of these things we get to know about in, 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 during the course of the investigation and the police coming up with their report and then filing for, for, for prosecution for, for, for the stories. It's, it's, it's rather, uh, Unfortunate. I, 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 I just pity the, the young lady, and I pity the family of the of the of the young man and people working with him. It's, it's, it's unfortunate. It's 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 it's, it's sad in it. It's, it's when I read the story, I tell you, I, I didn't even have the courage to listen to the entire story because it's something that started that two lives have been wasted already. Two lives have been wasted. Um, depending on the outcome. The man is gone, and the lady, um, no matter how, when once prosecution starts, even if she's not charged for murder, probably she'll be charged for man's court, but that means she's going to spend some time in prison. And she has, um, she's already been stigmatized, quote unquote, uh, with, with this particular issue. I pray that God, uh, in his infinite mercy, will just help to console both families that are involved. <coughs> That's just my comment on that. All right, so um, moving on, we see a story here on uh, the Daily Independent newspaper. 
It says that uh, the WHO has raised the alarm over rising cases of COVID-19 in Africa. And there's also this cholera outbreak now. The FCT uh, has recorded seven deaths in 91 cholera cases. Um, taking a look at this cholera situation and the whole COVID-19, would you say Nigeria has let, lent any you know, lessons regarding our oh, health yeah. sector? It's not even the health sector. It's about public health. That's to, this, this area of medicine is called public health. Now, public health, when you talk about cholera outbreak, um, what type of drainage system do we have? How clean our community? While we were growing up as kids, we, we used to have this sanitary inspector. We called them Wuli Wuli. You see this sanitary inspector because in the 70s and in the 60s, one of the major public health issue with that with was cholera outbreak. You have the sanitary inspector, they can enter anybody's house, they look into your environment, in front of your house, you don't clean your drainage and the rest of it, you know, you, you are um, arrested or you are given a fine or you are given um, a deadline to ensure that you do all of that. They even check your drinking water pot. You know, we used to have this ethanol wet pot. Um, um, and then we used to say, Woli, Woli, Tang, Wiji, Yom, Yom, you know? We used to sing that song to prepare the minds of everybody in ensuring that you make adequate provisions to ensure that when sanitary inspector come visiting, they do all of that. But I tell you, I've worked in the local government and I've seen the sanitary inspector. Only, the only days they go out, you know, the only days they go out. They only go out on Thursdays. And when they go out on Thursdays, they go to look out for, for, for the people that do not comply with the... 10 o'clock um, 10 o'clock um, coffee, 10 a.m. coffee until you open your your businesses. That's what they do. And then they lock up shops. You see them passing by dirty drainage system in front and not doing nothing. It's just enforcement they go for. They don't go for compliance. You see, that's, that's the problem we have in Nigeria. People go for enforcement and not compliance. I think we should emphasize more on compliance. You have not done this. Do this. We should be using corrective measures and not punitive measures. You just correct the person. I was, I was, uh, today, I just want to relate a story to this um, concerning that because it's, it's pathetic. That's why you have all this problem over, over there. Now, someone is driving, probably not familiar with that road, is entering through the road and is going, you will wait for him to get to the end of the road before you arrest him. You arrest him. Whereas well, you could have, the enforcement officer could have waited at the entrance of the road and just direct the person that this is the way to go through. But in Lagos, for instance, they will hide. They will wait for you to commit the crime to arrest you. Why don't you prevent the crime? Crime prevention is the same thing with this health issue. Why don't we prevent it before it happens? By taking measures, ensuring that people comply with health protocol. For example, what are the protocol concerning COVID-19? Wash your hands, social distancing, use of face masks and the, and the rest of it. How have you complied? And if you ensure that you get vaccinated, what effort? We are waiting for donation for vaccination. How many people have been vaccinated? And if, what are the misconceptions and truth of vaccination that people have concerning that? So the outbreak of WHO, you will be worried. The outbreak of cholera will join it because you are getting towards the raining, raining, Raining season, and if you block the drain system and the drain system can't flow, it creates an, 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 an outbreak. An outbreak is only a cholera outbreak. We'll soon see the outbreak of malaria very, very soon. It's just a matter of time because once your drains are not clean, once your environment are not clean and not neat and tidy, it, it creates the room for the habitation of, of mosquitoes. And then after cholera outbreak, you have malaria outbreak, and then we have a public health disaster in our hand. And we don't, we don't want to have another endemic situation. We are already dealing with a pandemic. This endemic situation, we don't have to create an endemic situation. This endemic situation can be corrected if we ensure compliance. Okay, so finally, there's all the stories here that I saw on uh, the Daily Independent, and it's talking about airport concession. Sirica is saying the federal government would finalize concessions uh, by August, and we know all the concerns uh, concerning this job losses uh, here and there. Uh, where, where do you stand regarding this concession topic? 
government has no business running businesses except to regulate it. That's just that's just it. Government had no business. Um, look, uh, comply. Compare when MN2 was considered to by Courtney. Look at the situate the operations of MM2 with the operations of MM1. Situate the two together. Government have no business in business except to regulate. As far as I'm concerned, I'm in support of the concession. Let government take off its hand, hand it over, and let people. Uh, we don't have to be voting money for those airports every year. If it is, look, the largest airport in the United Kingdom is operated by Nigeria. Is it from Britain? It was considered to him. So that's the best approach. That's the global standard approach. And I'm in support of government concerning that. Just imagine if you have not considered telecoms telecom sector to the private sector. What do you think will happen to the telecom sector in Nigeria now? What do you think will have happened? Would that have made the gains and the growth that we have made when it comes to the telecom sector? If you wake my dad up from the grave and tell him that, you know what, this is the way the telecommunication sector in Nigeria is like, he will tell you it's not possible because he never lived to see the, the regulation of the telecommunication sector. Just imagine if you have left... Um, the broadcasting um, state broadcasting industry in the hand of government alone, without the regulation of 1990, what do you think would have happened to the broadcasting uh, sector? And that's why a lot of people are, 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 are against the the draconian um, review of the NBC NBC Act that will turn the Minister of Information to a behemoth. To a behemoth to that will turn into a Frankenstein monster that can just and a Dracula that can suck out life out of any any media organization, be it broadcast media organization or online or digital digital platform. So that's 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 that is the reason. So as far as I'm concerned, um this issue needs a second second look. Okay. All right, Mr. Jide Johnson, thank you for joining us this very beautiful Friday morning. Um, I know you missed Sarogi, but he's joining us in just a minute. All right. It's a pleasure to, to, to be with you, Anita. And once again, have a wonderful weekend. Ensure that you enjoy yourself after a solid work throughout the week. Thank and you. Happy weekend to all of our viewers all over the world. Thank you. All right, Sergio Gorm will be joining us in just a minute for Today in History. And today in history, we're going back to the year 1950 to tell you about a very significant event in Asia and in 2009 uh, about one of the most awarded pop stars in history. Do stay with us.